Hello and welcome again everybody, it's your boy Mike here and this channel is called Social Rockstars. Now in this channel I explore social topics, social skills and I give you tips and tricks on how to improve your social life and your communication with others. So if that's something that you're interested in, please go and smash that subscribe button and let me tell you what the video today is going to be about. It's going to be about the conflict triangle. If you don't know what this is, this is the interaction between three main players. Now that's the aggressor or the person who feels justified to be angry, the person who feels justified to have a problem, express it, maybe be a bit more vocal about that and uh, of course he's gonna express that problem to the victim. Now the victim feels like they've been treated completely unjustly, they feel like they don't deserve this bad energy, they don't deserve these bad vibes and uh, what do they do? They go and they complain to the defender. Now the defender is the third part of that triangle and this is the person who generally gets satisfaction from being able to help the helpless. This is the person who likes being there for other people. He gets his emotional balance from being able to help other people who cannot be helped. Now, whether that's the case, whether that's not the case, it's really, really depends on the situation. So now that we've uncovered who the actual actors in the conflict triangle are, I wanna dig deeper and explain to you why this actually is important for you to understand and how it's going to benefit you. The conflict triangle occurs when there's a situation happening, when there's something happening, when there's a conflict between two people. Now, you're not gonna have a conflict triangle all the time, and as I'll explain to you a bit later in the video, your position and your role might change. Okay, so now that we've got that covered, let's get deeper into it and let me tell you why this is important for you to know. So knowing what role you're playing in a certain situation really gives you an advantage because A, you decide whether you wanna take part in that interaction and whether it's going to be worth it for you or whether it's going to be worth it for the other person. Now, let's say you're the defender and uh, are you actually helping the victim by coming to their aid? Are you actually taking away their ability to stand up for themselves? Now, if you're the aggressor, are you actually justified to get into that argument? Do you actually feel like this is necessary? Could you achieve your goals in a completely different way? If you're the victim, would you say something about it? How would you react in that situation if it was you? How would you try to improve the situation and your position? Also, uh, what this does is it helps you understand your psychological needs better. It helps you understand what makes you feel good and it helps you understand what the other parties in this conflict are interested in, what makes them feel better. Maybe they want more power, they want to feel powerful over someone else or maybe they are searching for someone to come to their rescue. So it's really important that you have that advantageous position um, so you can choose which interactions you want to take part in and which interactions you want to avoid. And as always, um, entering a conflict is a dangerous zone because in many cases, even though you are aware um, of your position and how you feel about this thing, it can be unpredictable because there's at least one other party uh, in this situation. So you really need to take care in how you approach the situation, no matter what position you are in the conflict triangle, to kind of try and mitigate the damage that this might do or try and work out how you can achieve your goals without escalating the situation even further. I will do what needs to be done! No, oh, I'm damned to hell! You should understand that, or you will mistake me. Now, as I said in the beginning, uh, your positions in that triangle might change. In some points, you might be the aggressor. You might be someone who's feeling like you're justified to be angry. In other situations, you might be the defender. Maybe a friend of yours is complaining about someone that you commonly know and uh, you're trying your best to kind of get into their position and kind of offer them some support and some help along the way. Or maybe you're the victim. Maybe someone unjustly uh, accuses you of something and you feel like there's absolutely nothing that you can do and you go to a third party just so you can kind of vent it out because you can't vent it to them. Another thing to mention is that those positions they don't just change uh, in the course of every interaction but they can also change during the interaction. So 
the more you talk with those people, the more the relationships change. So someone who started off as the victim might end up being the aggressor or someone who started being the defender might end up being the victim. Normally, I would say the defender is a bit more of a static position. However, that can happen. So you really need to bear in mind that just as human relations are constantly changing, the same way those changes can be applied to the conflict triangle. And as those changes are happening, you really need to pay attention on where those people are going, where are you standing in that conflict triangle, what are your next actions and what's going to be beneficial for you and the whole situation. That should be what dictates your actions and that should be what dictates your outlook on how to proceed in a certain situation. As soon as those positions change, you need to decide, okay, am I comfortable being in this position? Am I comfortable being in this interaction? Or do I want to withdraw? And if the answer is, no, I'm not comfortable, then you should always take a step back. Well, I'm out of here. Because once you don't take that step back, then emotions start coming into play. And in many cases, emotions lead to rash decisions and rash statements. And you can really mess up the whole plan that you had in your head. Another thing is the truth is also a matter of perspective. So let's say, for example, if you're the defender, uh, you only know the truth of the victim. You don't really know the truth of the aggressor. So you really need to take this into account. And once you start interacting with both parties, then you need to start making decisions for yourself. Okay, was this correct? Was that how they said it is because if especially if it's someone really close to you then you're bound to kind of feel sympathy towards them and their position but in many cases you only see things from your perspective so it's very difficult for the victim to say no i was actually wrong just as a really really simple example the ones of you that have siblings definitely know that you're having an argument with your sibling and uh, one of you runs to your parents and says, oh no, he did this to me, or oh no, he did that to me. And then that's when you start entering into that conflict triangle. However, with your parents, it's a little bit different. Same thing goes with your friends. I don't know, you have two common friends. One of them comes to you and says, I don't know, Mike, uh, Jimmy is really pissing me off, you know? He had a go with me the other day. I feel like I can't do anything about it. And then you enter that role of the of the defender, or at least you have that opportunity if uh, you decide to take it. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? No! Do you? Yes, it's the inability to relate to another human being. These are just some few basic examples. You know, you can be the aggressor. You know, everyone is familiar with that. Someone pisses you off, someone makes you angry and then you start venting out on them. Now, that's, that's just a, such a classic example that whether that's gonna be an argument with a coworker or family member or someone random on the street that you don't know, but generally that's what happens. Now, why am I telling all these things? And I'll tell you how I came across the conflict triangle and that was during therapy. So I was telling my therapist about some uh, arguments that I had with some friends, whatever. I don't even remember what was the, the, the real story behind uh, what drove the conversation in that direction. And I said to her, hey, you know, um, this person really made me angry. This is how the situation evolved, etc., etc." And then she told me about this. It really opened my eyes and it really made me go back so many situations uh, in which I didn't even know that this existed. I didn't even know that I was in a certain position or that I could have taken that engagement or that I couldn't take that engagement. So that really helped me kind of look at things a bit more practically, look at things with a bit more consistency rather than just emotion and how you feel at the moment. And it really benefited me in terms of uh, interactions that I wanted to take and interactions that I wanted to pass on because no one wants to ruin their relationship with other people. You want to have productive relationships, whether that's friends, family, acquaintances. You want to get things out of people and you want to give things to them. And uh, I think conflict and arguments are definitely not one of the things that either party is in that. And as a final note, which role you take in a certain interaction really depends on your emotional background, on the way you're feeling, and on your relationship with those other people included. Being able to recognize your impulses and understanding where they're coming from is essential to us as civilized people. And I'm sure that this is going to help you improve your self-awareness and emotional well-being. And once you have your impulsive actions on 
under control then you can decide which battles are worth fighting and which ones are worth passing on. So I hope this video was useful to you, it really was useful to me to learn it when I did and I hope that it's going to benefit your interactions with other people and it's going to help you make smarter decisions at the time. Now if you did like the video please don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button below and also in the comment section down below let me know what you'd like to see more of in this channel. I know this is a new channel and I know there's a lot more content to be done. I have a lot of ideas but it would really help me know what you like seeing, what you think is going to be useful to you and I'll be more than happy to dig deeper into that territory. See you for now.